Good afternoon, welcome to Manika IS and we will discuss current affairs of 9th April. First topic is related to international relation that is uh, or um, that is also related to environment. WHO air quality database 2022. WHO air quality database 2022. The World Health Organization Air Quality Database 2022 has, start, has stated that almost entire global population 99 percent breathes air that exceeds WHO air quality limits. 99 percent, 99 percent of world population breathes air that crosses the WHO air, uh, air quality limits. That means all, almost all population are inhaling those air which are harmful to health according to WHO. It is a very, it is very severe condition right because the health hazards because of air pollution or various types of pollution is uh, it is very getting aggravated day by day because of various anthropogenic activities maybe because of vehicular pollution or industrial pollution or because of agriculture or because of various chemicals used in agriculture. So, that need to be limited. So, urgent action need to be taken against the air pollution findings. Quality monitored but still bad. More, thousand, six, more than 6000 cities in, uh, in 117 countries are now monitoring the air quality, but the residents are still breathing on healthy levels. So, although the monitoring is developed world, but the, the breathing all healthy, they are still breathing on healthy levels of fine particulate matter. And nitrogen oxide, nitrogen oxide while people low and middle income countries are suffering highest exposure, especially the develop, developing countries who do not have the enough resources to invest in environment or who do not have the enough resources to invest in sustainable development, they are suffering the most. That is. Uh, and one thing is that even if it is monitored in 6000 cities it is monitored, but still no substantial steps have been taken to control the air quality. So, that everybody in this in the cities they are suffering very poor air quality. Then nitrogen oxide concentration the first time data that has been taken from ground measurement in the annual mean of concentration of nitrogen oxide. Nitrogen oxide of is a common urban pollutant and precursor of particulate matter and ozone, right? Precursor of particulate matter and, and ozone. It is a nitrogen oxide, it's, it is very dangerous, it creates acid rain, it also uh, get inside our body and creates various diseases. Particulate matter, it also includes measurements of particulate matter with diameters equal or smaller than 10 micrometer, which we call as PM10, PM10 and PM25. These two causes various respiratory problems. They are called as particulate matter and they enters our body by breathing. By breathing. Both groups of pollutants originate mainly from human activities related to fossil fuel combustion. Fully fossil fuels combustion in various industries also in especially the vehicular pollutions. These PM25 and PM10 and PM10 they come out of vehicular pollution and creates various respiratory problems in human beings. What is the effect of health? Particular matter, especially PM25, to be capable of penetrating the deep into the lungs and entering the bloodstream. 2. Point PM2.5, it is capable to enter the lungs and entering the bloodstream, causing cardiovascular, cere uh, cerebrovascular stroke and respiratory impact. So, various respiratory diseases that may be re that may be resulted from PM2.5, that can various heart diseases and also it can affect the lungs and our breathing system or respiratory system. Nitrogen oxide is associated with respiratory diseases particularly asthma, right, asthma leading to respiratory symptoms such as coughing, which, uh, wheezing or difficulty breathing, hospital admission and visits emergency rooms. So, various diseases are associated with, with nitrogen oxides when it enters to the room and PM2 and PM10 and PM2.5 they reach the lungs and they affect the uh, various, it, they also cause various cardiovascular diseases. 
then increasing awareness as many as 2000 more cities and human settlements are now recording ground monitoring data for particular matter 2000 cities human are now recording ground monitoring data for particular matter that is pm25 and 2.5 this marks almost six fold rise in reporting since the data was, was made in 2011 so already awareness are increasing monitoring is of air quality is increasing but the steps taken to reduce the air pollution or the steps taken to or uh, we can say that mitigating effect mitigating steps are not taken what do you mean by mitigation and adaptation adaptation means you adapt to the existing situation for example you in you insert a air filter in inside your home that is we can call as that is adaptation because even if the environment the problem exists still you can exist and you, you will not suffer a lot that is adaptation mitigation means addressing the cause no such mitigating i mean significant mitigating steps have been taken okay next Metro evolution who last year revised its air quality guidelines making them more stringent in an effort to help countries better evaluate the healthiness of their own air revised various guidelines have given by who to evaluate the condition of air in various cities and that has improved the evaluation then who air quality guidelines there are uh, recommended air quality levels for six pollutants one is particular matter that is pm 2.5 and pm 10 then ozone o3 uh, then nitrogen oxide sulfur dioxide, sulfur dioxide carbon monoxide carbon monoxide is extremely dangerous this can, this can kill a person this enter to the bloodstream right they are all not they are not the health hazards but they also give other damaging pollutants they are also they also create various secondary pollutants one by one we will see pm 10 the average pm10 should not exceed 15 micrograms per cubic meter of air while 24 hour average should not exceed than 40 micrograms per cubic meter right compared to this earlier limit was 20 micrograms per cubic meter annually and 50 micrograms per cubic meter a day so this is the pm 2.5 level then PM 2.5 the recommendation for PM 2.5 is annual average should not exceed 5 micrograms per cubic meter and 15 micrograms per meter cubic meter a day but now it has the earlier limit uh, the earlier limit was 10 micrograms per cubic meter now it has changed to 5, micro, 5 micrograms per cubic meter and 25 micrograms per cubic meter in a day so these are the revision, revised guidelines ozone ozone level average should not exceed 10 micrograms per cubic meter over 24 hour period nitrogen oxide should not exceed 25 micrograms per cubic meter sulfur dioxide should not be below 40 micrograms per cubic meter carbon monoxide should not exceed more than 4 micrograms per cubic meter over the same time period so these are the various new types of limits that are given by who to maintain the air quality to measure the air quality and to monitor the air quality and what need to need to be done adopt and revise implement national air quality standards according to the latest who yes this latest who recommendations that need to be implemented monitor all air quality and identify sources of pollution right the sources of pollution need to be identified and also they need to be monitored then energy efficiency we can also apply the various equipments that are energy efficient right that will reduce our burden on fossil fuels and that will ultimately reduce the carbon emission so so support the transition from exclusive use of clean household energy for cooking heating and lightning invest in energy efficient housing and power generation right for cooking heating and lightning we can use energy efficient bulbs or energy efficient devices that will reduce our energy consumption by almost half and also that will reduce the consumption of fossil fuel by half Carving the fossil fuel use and taking other tangible steps to reduce the air pollution levels. So all the steps that need to be taken. Then sustainable transportation, building safe and affordable public transport system and pedestrian and cycle friendly networks. Cycle friendly networks so that will add will they can that so that uh, people will be get motivation to use something that is not harmful. 
some vehicles that is not harmful for the environment that is cyclophile friendly networks. Affordable public transport system, if affordable public transport system or public will travel can travel comfortably, they will not purchase for private vehicles. One person if one person will take a car to his office and every person will take a car to the office, then there will be huge pollution. Instead of that, instead of 30 cars, all those people can go by a bus if that is comfortable, right? And that will that will reduce the that will reduce the uh, air pollution. Waste management improve the industry and municipal waste management because that is one of the biggest reason of, of air pollution as well. Because they are born many times they are born also they they emit toxic gases. The reduce agricultural waste incineration in incineration. Forest fires, certain agroforestry activities like charcoal production, they have to reduce which are the, all the agricultural activities which are harmful to the environment that need to be reduced or alternative mode need to be searched. So, these are the steps that need to be taken to counter air pollution. Then another most important thing is awareness and education, we have to change our behavior, right. So, far as air pollution is concerned, right, uh, air pollution uh, for health professional and providing tools for uh, for health sector to engage. World Health Day 2020, World Health Day marked 7th April, remember World Health Day, it marked 7th April, World Health Day 2022 will focus on global attention, urgent action need to keep humans plant healthy and poster movement to create societies focused on well-being. So, what are the urgent actions that need to be taken to, to ensure a uh, better health of the world? One of the most important thing is the air pollution because it is now affecting 99 percent of the population, right. Then WHO estimates that more than 13 million deaths around the world each year are due to unavoidable environmental causes, 30 million deaths around the world that means around 1.3 crore, 1.3 crore people are dying because of various types of pollution, right. Theme of 2002 World Health Day is Our Planet, Our Health. Remember, the day is 7th April and Our Planet, Our Health is the theme for World Health Day celebrated on 7th April to generate awareness against various pollution because every year 13 million people are dying because of various types of pollution worldwide. Next prelim question is. Great Indian Bastard. Recently, Supreme Court has directed the high level committee to submit a status report on relation to protection of great Indian Bastard. The committee was constituted to examine the feasibility of under, undergrounding overhead power lines. Feasibility of undergrounding power, overhead power, uh, power lines. Right. Protection of guest, great Indian Bastard. Right. Okay. It is one of the heaviest, let us know about it. Great Indian Bastard, many, the very various chances that they will be asked because it is state bar of Rajasthan. Remember, Great Indian Bastard is the state bar of Rajasthan. It is one of the heaviest flying birds endemic to the Indian region. Heaviest flying birds endemic to Indian region, that means it is not seen in not seen around, it is limited to Indian subcontinent. Then untamed arid grasslands, in arid grasslands, especially in the deserts they stay. Maximum number of GIVs are found in Jaisalmer and Indian Army controlled field firing range of Pokhran, Rajasthan. Near Jaisalmer and Pokhran, great Indian hostages are largely witnessed. Then other areas like Gujarat, Maharashtra, Karnataka, Andhra Pradesh. Other areas Gujarat, Maharashtra, Karnataka, Andhra Pradesh, great, uh, the great Indian hostages is also seen. It is, uh, it is conserved under, under the schedule it is conserved under Wildlife Protection Act Schedule 1, that means it is very important, right. We will see. Population, as per the, as per the study Wildlife Institute of India, there is around 150 great Indian bustard left across the country, that means only 150, very few, which includes about 120 birds in Rajasthan and less than 10 birds in east states of so, Gujarat, Maharashtra, Andhra Pradesh and Karnataka. So, their number is reducing just 120 numbers. IUCN status, it is critically endangered, it is critically endangered that means if they will die, it is the whole species will be left out of the world. 
They are critically endangered. Listed in Wildlife Protection Act Schedule 1. Threats to the bird or hunting intensification of agriculture and power lines. They die because of power lines. That way government is considering for taking under, under, uh, 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 or take underground power lines. Right. So, remember critically endangered. It is, it has population of 150 and it is critically endangered and listed in Wildlife Protection Act clients in Schedule 1. So, all those all those animals who are listed in schedule 1 uh, we will consider that they are the uh, various threats to their life and indian and their it, it is very important to conserve them indian initiatives for protection of great indian bustard is habitat improvement and conservation breeding of great indian bustard in an integrated approach this one habitat improvement and conservation breeding of great indian bustard in an integrated approach the Ministry of Final Financial, the Ministry with financial support from National Authority of Compensatory Operation Fund has sanctioned an outlay of 33 crores for the duration of 5 years for the program tilted habitat improvement and conservation breeding of Great Indian Bustard in an integrated approach. 30,000 crores from compensatory CAMPA funds, right? Compensatory Operation Fund, that is a fund. With a, was maintained by both state government and central government. The share of central government is less and that are especially utilized for uh, conservation of biodiversity. So, next. So, the most important facts are it is critically endangered listed in Wildlife Protection Act Schedule 1. It is limited to arid regions of uh, Rajasthan, especially Jaisalwar area and um, Pokhran area. In total, there is 128 birds in India and out of which uh, 128 birds in India out of which majority are in uh, 150 out of 150 birds in India 128 are in Rajasthan rest are in Maharashtra Andhra Pradesh Karnataka and Gujarat right and one more important thing is that it is uh, the one of the biggest threat is they are the power lines that is why government is protecting great Indian bastards right next objective to build up the captive population of great indian bustard and release the chicks in the wild for increasing the population is also promote the in situ conservation of the species objective is to promote in situ conservation in situ conservation means taking into a lab or botanical or uh, or a zoo that is in situ conservation taking away uh, sorry 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 in situ conservation means protecting them inside their biosphere, biosphere or their natural habitat that is in situ conservation. Ex situ conservation means you will take them to, the, to a particular zoo or a particular laboratory or area where they, they will be uh, critical taken care of to, to grow their population. Then task force, the ministry has also constituted task force for suggesting eco-friendly measures to mitigate impacts of power transmission lines and other power transmission infrastructures on wildlife including great Indian bustard. Ministry has instituted a task force, right, because there is poaching that is why government has to create a task force. The great Indian bustard has been included in appendix 1 of convention of yes, CMS, appendix 1 in the convention of migratory species CMS on the basis of proposal submitted by India. It is also mascot prestigious 13th CMS conference of parties held in Gandhinagar. It was also the mascot of prestigious 13th CMS conference of parties in Gandhinagar, giving wider publicity to the conservation of the species that is Great Indian Bustard. The important habitats of Great Indian Bustard designated national parks, sanctuaries, like national parks, sanctuaries for their better protection are, okay, they are also designated. The species have been identified for conservation efforts under the component of species recovery program of centrally sponsored scheme development of wild habitat species recovery program the scheme is development of wild habitat so it is a centrally sponsored scheme that means both contributed by states and the center so the important thing is that there is a task force it is it is also mentioned in the as a prestigious in the mascot of prestigious 13th conference of parties in gandhinagar so that, so that given while various importance or publicity for the conservation of the species of guest Indian bustard 
there is also designated national bird sanctuary national parks and sanctuaries so various measures have been taken by the government then directions of national green tribunal ngt directions of national green tribunals ngt order the time bound auction plan for implementation of the mitigation measures such as installation of bird diverters and the regular maintenance monitoring by power agencies Re, uh, bird diverters and the regular maintenance so that during their path they will not come across the power lines and they will not die conservation reserves great indian western habitats declared as conservation reserves right wherever there is a state that are conservation reserves so that that will give them protection uh, project great indian western launched by rajasthan government rajasthan government has launched project great indian western india's fast steel slag road surat has become fast city in, in the country to get processed steel lag steel lag road right steel lag means industrial waste in steel steel industry and road is made up of steel lag it is made in surat city surat city is in gujarat it is uh, as a part of part of joint venture project by csir it's a research institute right then crri union ministry of steel niti ayog and asalar mittal nipal steel steel Uh, Nippon Steel and uh, Hajira. So these various private sector research institutes and government combinedly they have uh, processed a steel lag road in the uh, in part of Gujarat. Right about the road, it is a six-lane public road. The construction began around a year ago, converting mounds mounds of steel waste into steel lag ag aggregate. That's why that they are used. The road is now being used by heavy duty vehicles, multinational located in the. industrial state of the outskirts of surat the project falls under the initiative of waste to wealth and clean india campaign waste to wealth so steel lag the industrial the industrial waste are used in the in making of the road that is in the outskirts of surat that is in gujarat district and it is a it is initiative of waste to wealth and clean india campaign then process The slag is generated from steel surface burning around 1500 to 1600 degree centigrade uh, of molten flux material as an impurity. It is generated from steel furnaces. Right? It is the waste is generated from steel furnaces, especially where steels are created out of the ores. The molten material is poured into slag pits for cooling, as per the customized procedure and further process to develop stable stick slag aggregates. With better metal properties in place of the natural aggregate commonly used on road constructions. So they are used in road constructions. As so we can we can say that they are used for. Uh, I mean, uh, it's a clean. Uh, we are using wastes, right? In this process, they are used especially during the molten of the materials. They are taken. They are segregated and they are used in road constructions. Benefits: the utilization of processed steel lag in road construction paves the way for sustainable use of waste. it right. it paves the way for sustainable use of waste we have to we, we must study and derive various methods how to use sustainable how to sustainably use the waste because now at time we have been using various goods and service uh, various goods and because of it we exploit various natural resources and because of exploitation of various natural resources and various anthropogenic activities we are undergoing various climate change and global warming and various other effects so you have to reuse the reuse recycle various metals and various goods and goods so that so that first of thing that will reduce the carbon emission another thing is that that will reduce the resources and one more thing is that our the biggest problem of urbanization that is solid waste management that problem can be solved we are we are in big cities we show there is huge accumulation of wastes so this will be reduced that is they will be used because the cost the it will be used in the road construction the construction cost of processed steel lag road is 30% cheaper than the roads built from natural aggregates it is also cheaper means it is very cost efficient so if so it is cost efficient as compared to the natural uh, natural aggregates that's why so if it, it is durable one more thing you have to check that if it is durable then we will apply this method everywhere the thickness of the road is also 30% lesser than the normal ones right while durability is much longer due to the utilization of steel steel lag 
so in every manner this steel leg road is better than the all the traditional conventional roads so lifespan of cement concrete road is 30 years while that of bitumen steel leg road is around 15 years so its lifespan is 15 years it's cheaper but lifespan is less as compared to almost half than that of the concrete road then the cost is all, uh, the cost are also much durable during the monsoon it is in the line of india's commitment to united nations sustainable development goal 9 for building resilient infrastructure through inclusive and sustainable industrialization and green technologies we have to develop industrial we have to develop our infrastructure we have to, we have to develop industrialization but with sustainable technology especially the green technologies next Familial forestry. What is familial forestry? Around 2.5 million saplings have been planted in the past 15 years with active participation of students and desert dwellers under familial forestry. Right? Around 2.5 million saplings have been planted because of my students and desert dwellers under family forestry. Right? About familial forestry. Familial forestry means caring for the tree as a family member so that the tree becomes a part of the family's consciousness. So that means associating a tree with a particular family member and he will take care of the particular tree and why the that various purposes will be solved that is it becomes a part of the family consciousness. The movement involved more than a million families from more than 1500 villages of desert from northwest Rajasthan. At 1500 villages of northwest Rajasthan they have started this familial forestry and around 2.5 million samplings have been planted. Familial forestry of Rajasthan is a unique concept that relates tree with family making it family making a, a, it is a green family member. So, a tree is a green family member according to the western Rajasthan people. The green greener eco socialization brings environmental sensitivity and empowerment. This brings environmental sensitivity. The environmental sensitivity is the most important thing. The person who is highly sensitized for example, so for, for environmental causes he will never use I mean he will hesitate to use such activities that is that is harmful for the environment. Land for Life Award 2021 was compared to the familiar forestry of Rajasthan India by UNCCD 2021. Land for Life Award 2021 familiar forestry of Rajasthan in India by UNCCD 2021. One conferred to familiar forestry, land for life over 2021 was conferred to familiar forestry of Rajasthan, right. So, especially it was started by students and family members, it is a new that is it is similar to adding a new member to the family, right. It is a it is wildly prevalent in the west northwest Rajasthan and 1500 villages have adopted it. Other relative insights, the government has various schemes related to afforestation, plantation leading to combating desertification and land degradation depending on the climatic and geographical condition of that particular area including schemes of MOEFCC under 20 point program like national afforestation program NFE. The program are other related initiatives are national afforestation program NFE. We have a campus in compressed compensatory afforestation, national mission for green India, GIM and 20 point program. So, these are the other initiatives for plantation. Then land for life award, it is an award program for the United Nation convention to combat desertification. Land for life, United Nation for convention for combat desertification that is UNCCD which is conferred every two years and that is given to Rajasthan right for its um, for its moment right, that is familiar forestry. The land for life order aims to provide global recognition individuals and organizations whose work initiatives have made a significant contribution to sustainable development and sustainable land management that is SLM. Then Bakka Ukraine more than 300 bodies have been found in Kiev suburb, uh, suburb that is Bakka. Uh, the discoveries have drawn comparisons with the killings of civilians in the area during World War II. 300 dead bodies have been found in the Bokka area of Ukraine. And severe because both there is ongoing fight between the Russia and the Ukraine. What is Bokka? This is 
The discoveries has been made keep our area called as Boka town located 20 from northwest capital and which had estimated population of around 36,000 before the invasion began. The discoveries have drawn comparisons with the cleaning of civilians during the World War II. The first battle of Kiev in which Hitler's operation Barbarossa against the Soviet Union began in 9, June 1941. The second battle of, of Kiev when Red Army started to push back the Germans from the Ukraine. The area around Ukrainian capital even in Boka saw holocaust by bullets. So this is very important. This Boka they may ask about the location in prelims which is related to your Ukraine where 300 people have been died and they have linked it to the World War I and World War II because in both in, in, in World War II because that is where second first battle of Kiev has started and second battle of Kiev has started also in that area. Genocides or war crimes? Ukraine and the US have accused Russia of war crimes even earlier alleging that it is targeted civilians in the bombing. War crimes is defined as grave breaches of Geneva Conventions. Agreement signed after World War II that laid down international humanitarian laws during war time. So, US has been alleging that US has been alleging that this war crimes as done by USA, right? And that is violation of Geneva Conventions. History of genocides, Holocaust is within history of genocides, Holocaust in which more than 6 million Jews were ex exterminated, various people have been died. The 1915-20 the mass killings of, by, of Armenians by Ottoman troops, killings of 8 lakh Tutsis and murdered Hutus in Rwanda in 1994. And Srevenika massacre of 1995, these are the history of genocides, uh, that is mass killings and whether Russia can be called as mass killings or not, that is a discussion, but it has got 300 bodies, so it is less, so far as you can call it as um, a small genocide or um, war crime, we can call it as war crime. Global reaction, I would call from more sting, stronger reactions against Russia. Germany, France, Italy, Spain, Denmark, Sweden have expelled dozens of Russian diplomats and Swedish prosecutors have opened a preliminary investigation into possible war crimes in Ukraine. Right. Swedish prosecutors have uh, opened preliminary, preliminary war crimes. Okay. Then we will see the prelims questions. Which reference to stand of India scheme, consider the following for stand of India scheme, it is a scheme related to generation of employment and all it is uh, it is related to and also as well as uh, entrepreneurship creation, right, creation of entrepreneurship, right. It aims to promote entrepreneurship among all the economic marginal people, see wherever there is the all, it is not all, it is some selected people from marginalized people, it is not all the economic, they are not economically marginalized. Right, so this statement is wrong. It facilitates bank loans between 1 lakh and 1 crore, this is right. 1 lakh and 1 crore will be provided for creation of entrepreneurship. So that has um, employment facilities will be provided. Loans under the schemes are available for only greenfield projects, yields only greenfield projects that will be available. So uh, 2 and 3 options are right options. Next. Consider the following statements, NAT grid is the integrated intelligence grid connecting databases, core security agencies of India. Yes, core security agencies, it, it was, uh, it is against, it is an anti-terrorism organization that is NAT grid, it, in, uh, it, in, uh, it is an integrated intelligence grid, right. So far as intelligence is concerned, sharing of information is most important. Connecting databases of core security agencies of India. It was proposed in the aftermath of terrorist attacks in the Indian parliament in 2001. No, this is not in 2001, it is the attack on 2008. In 2000, after the 2008 attack, this NAT grid was established under the Ministry of Home Affairs. It is exempted from right to information act, yes, it is exempted from right to information, it is also right answer. So one and three options are right answer. Why it is exempted? This is because to ensure national security or um, for security purposes. 
ओके हु इज द फॉलोइंग इज करेक्ट रिगार्डिंग द लैंड फॉर लाइफ अवार्ड लैंड फॉर लाइफ अवार्ड इट इज ए अवार्ड प्रोग्राम इन इंटरनेशनल यूनियन फॉर कंजर्वेशन ऑफ सी लैंड फॉर लाइफ अवार्ड इट इज आयुष्यन इज स्पेशली कंजर्वेशन ऑफ वेरियस स्पेसिस राइट स्पेशली प्लांट्स एंड एनिमल्स बोथ देन सेकेंड इज सो दिस दिस इज द रॉन्ग आंसर बिकॉज इट इज रिलेटेड टू एंडेंजर्ड स्पेसिस विच इज ए क्रिटिकल एंडेंजर्ड स्पेसिस ऑल दिस थिंग्स आर डॉन बाई आई यू सी एन एन नॉन ऑफ देन सेकेंड इज थर्ड इज थर्ड ऑप्शन इज इट इज कनेक्टेड कॉन्फ्रेड एवरी इयर टू द मोस्ट डिजर्विंग ऑर्गनाइजेशन द फील्ड ऑफ कंजर्वेशन ऑफ नेचर लैंड फॉर लाइफ दिस इज नॉट अबाउट कंजर्वेशन ऑफ नेचर नॉट लैंड इट्स नॉट अबाउट नेचर इट्स अबाउट लैंड राइट इट्स नॉट अबाउट नेचर नेचर कंसिस्ट ऑफ वेरियस रिवर लैंड एंड एयर एवरीथिंग सो सेकेंड ऑप्शन इज ऑल्सो रॉन्ग इट इज गिवन मोस्ट डाइवर्स चेंज मेकर्स एंगेज इन लैंड रिस्टोरेशन सी लैंड रिस्टोरेशन एंड कंजर्वेशन थ्रू एग्जाम्पलरी एंड इनोवेटिंग इनिशियेटिव सो डी ऑप्शन इज द राइट ऑप्शन बिकॉज देर इज लैंड रिस्टोरेशन लैंड फॉर लाइफ अवार्ड हु इज द फॉलोइंग कंट्रीज आर द बॉर्डर ऑफ यूक्रेन वेलोरस इज अ बॉर्डर ऑफ यूक्रेन येस वेलोरस इज देयर Moldova is there, Poland is there, Russia is there, Hungary is there, Kazakhstan is not there, China is not there. Options are not given properly. Uh, China is not there, but all these countries, Belarus, Russia, Hungary, Poland, Moldova, they are the borders of Ukraine, right? China is at two distance, and Kazakhstan is in Central Asia. So they are they are not the border of Ukraine, right? Next question. The Renke Commission. The Renke Commission sometimes seen in the news, which is related to look out the atomic energy activities. No, this is not related to activity energy. Cattle condition. It is important from what interest of women. It is D N T commodities. D notified or notified tribal groups, right? D notified or notified tribal groups. They are the most uh, you can say uh, vulnerable tribal groups or who are gone through various underdevelopment and they are suffering various. Uh, in socio economic backwardness and these dnt communities they may be scs they may be sts they may be obcs their category is very very different right they are also another information is that they are called as born criminals by the britishers right dnt communities are considered born criminal by the uh, by the britishers some of the dnt communities are included in the constitutions but some of the dnt communities are not included in the, in the constitution they are called as nomadic tribes who travels from one place to another for food gathering and other livelihood activities so the lecture end here like this video share this video and subscribe to manik is academy thank you these things are not by iucn and none of the then second and third is third option is it is connected conferred every year to the most deserving organization the field of conservation of nature land for life this is not about conservation of nature not land it's not about nature it's about land right it's not about nature nature consists of various river land and other air everything so second option is also wrong It is given most diverse change because engaged in land restoration, see, land restoration and conservation, exemplary and innovative initiatives. So D option is the right option because there is land restoration, land for life award. Biosphere or their natural habitat that is in situ conservation. In situ conservation means you will take them 